are these cloud platforms making you feel miserable blink twice uh, because you decided to use Next.js to build out your crappy about page dynamically server side and now every function invocation is costing like 10 cents a piece. I've calmed down. That's because we always had one friend on our side this whole time. I'm not talking about the triangle company. So if you put it up to your face, you'll see what they're all about. It's Cloudflare. I really like Cloudflare. I feel like I met them a couple hundred years ago, the people that work there. We might have been reincarnated or something. I must have done a nice deed to them. Because now when you go up to them, they're like, hey, any DDoS problems, we'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. We don't need any money. We'll do it for free. How about that? And there is another big feature that they have that no other cloud platform has there. So by the end of this video, you will essentially be able to add a video to your website and stream it uh, up to like 4K quality uh, and be able to switch between the qualities here, have a nice player. And this is practically free. You're not like paying for encoding. You're not paying for uh, streaming this. You're just paying to store this data in a bucket. As some of you might know, I've been working really hard on rebuilding my course platform, uh, which is really exciting. I can't wait to share more with you guys and it's gonna be shipped this year. So keep an eye on that. But one of the big challenges that we were facing uh, was streaming video. Streaming video is so bloody expensive. And that's why we were unteachable for the longest time, like eight years back when I originally started the YouTube channel. No way in Jose I would have started uh, like something from scratch with like implementing streaming myself. No, no, thank you. Because uh, you can rack up costs really, really easily. What are your options out there? Well, there's a couple, right? You have Mux. Uh, this is a really popular one. They have a Mux player as well. A bunch of like fun like SDKs uh, regarding playing video. And they have this on their website. It says with $100 you could. Let's see how far $100 gets you. Not too far, bloody hell. And so it says upload 500 one minute videos. That's a funny way of saying upload 500 minutes of video. Uh, so 500 minutes of video and then you can store 500 videos and stream 200K minutes to your customers. So that's kind of your limitation. You have a limitation with the amount you can stream out, with the amount you can hold, and maybe the length, I'm not sure. We gotta do the math. Why is this always so complicated to do? Oh, here we go. So I'm not sure about you, but usually when I look at things, the higher number is scarier than the lower number. Cloudflare looks really juicy. Now, there's a thing with Cloudflare that we're gonna talk about in just a second. So just hold your horses, okay? So $5 here gets you a really long way in Cloudflare because you get images as well. So you can store images and then Cloudflare can also deliver them and transfer them. So if you're going on your mobile or something, it's gonna do a smaller size image. It's gonna send back, right? It's not gonna send back like a hundred kilobyte that would look nice on the big screen. So it does a couple of different like variants of those images, which is really cool, right? But in this package, you can also stream stuff. Now this is not too not too shabby, but if you think about in grand in the grander scheme of things, right? A thousand minutes of video storage. You're like, wow, that's great, right? That's, well, how many, an hour is 60 minutes, right? So 10 hours is, is 600. And then you go, okay, so 10 hours is almost reaching now, right? You got the 20 hours already goes past because it's 1,200 minutes, right? So that's kind of where your limit is. And then of course the delivery. So you get 5X the amount. But if I'm thinking about, okay, if I'm making courses here, Holy crap, like if I make 20 courses, well, I've got, I've, got, I've got to go bankrupt here. How much am I going to spend? Hundreds of dollars because I have 20 courses on the website and my subscription is $5 a month or $10 a month. I'm not even cutting even. And out of all of these, I managed to find one that was finally acceptable, but we still haven't settled on this. But you might have heard of Bunny. Bunny is kind of like Cloud for a, a little bit in terms that they do uh, like CDN stuff. They do, they have these magic containers now as well, where you can run like your applications in it. Um, but they also have streaming. And this is, is pretty, pretty juicy for what it is. So if we head over here to products and we head over to stream, as you can see, the uploading actually doesn't cost as much. So if I do something like storing 300 gigabytes of video, it's only $4.50 per month. So let's say we store quite a few. Let's say we have loads of different videos, courses. Let's do half, a, look at that, half a terabyte, $6 a month. And then your monthly traffic, let's say you do a crazy amount, uh, half a terabyte of traffic. That's pretty juicy. 
that's twenty dollars a month how good is that and with bunny you also get the benefits of having uh, like drm protection and stuff like that so it'll like give you like pre-signed urls that expire after a while uh, so then you know the links cannot be shared and stuff like that did you know in cloudflare in r2 the egress is free meaning that you can upload the videos here in the bucket and stream it down and not inquire any cost on them now this is in their tos i'm not here to fight what they put it in so i'm gonna do it okay and if they remove it it'll make cloudflare look bad and i don't want cloudflare to look bad because i like cloudflare a lot um i'd be even down to sponsoring check this out i'm gonna take the video where i just spoke right now and i'm gonna upload it here's the intro to this video i'm gonna name it hello okay there we go so we got a video here hello and in my case i have basically a folder here with uh my courses right so modern javascript and then i have my chapter and then i have my videos in here right and as you notice how i have it here is i have this playlist entry u8 and basically this is going to look at all of these different folders and based on the bandwidth it's going to switch between the qualities so as you can see every folder here has uh, basically all these little segments and these are like four second chunk videos so when you play the playlist it's going to seek and look for all these small ts segments and we can generate these using ffmpeg so what we'll do is we'll take this hello and essentially create uh, this format here that we can upload afterwards all right this hls m3 u8 uh playlist okay so let me show you the script so i have a little 10 stack uh, start project here uh, this is where we're building out our course platform and we're really excited this framework has been nothing but fantastic to us uh but check this out so i have a little a little script here called hsl encode and what this essentially does is it takes in an input and then a working directory so i define these up here I define the quality and the resolutions that I want. I did four here. I'll, I'll do a 4K. I'll probably add it in here. But for now, I just did some testing and stuff like that. So we, we went up to 2K for the max. And then the bit rates I specified here. I'll add the labels as well, each with their own qualities. GOP, this is the actual frame rate. I should probably put this to 30. I'm not sure why I put this to 48. Let's lower that there. And then here, what we do is we essentially create a variant and we transcode and we basically append all these different segments to the master playlist that's the one in the main like directory here so if we check here as you can see there's a master playlist so this is the one playlist m3 u8 right and then each of each folder also has their own playlist with their own segments but this is the master one that kind of connects everything together and then here this little bit of ffmpeg line here actually generates those ts segments for us and then here we just pass in the presets we add like the actual frame rate to it and basically how big these uh, ts chunk files are as well as you can see here we put four for the size there's some like pros and cons if you have like bigger chunks so if they spend for 10 seconds uh the buffering can take longer right because it needs to load up the whole like 10 second segment rather than four right that's a bit faster to load you can also switch between the qualities quicker uh, and a couple of other parameters here but what i also did at the end here is i also essentially generate a thumbnail uh, out of the image as well so i take the clip and generate a jpeg as well so now let's give this a go so i'll just open up tmux here let's close this up we'll do tmux and i'll run dot slash scripts i'll do hsl encode and then we'll simply pass in this new video so we called it what did we call it hello right so let's take the hello let's just go here it's an mp4 right so recorded in obs hello and then i'll, I'll output it in slash one basics hello as well so let's do that and there we go it encodes it and then if we check here we go to courses basics and look at that we have hello and it generates the playlist it's going to generate the different qualities as well it might take a second or two so as you can see this finished now and essentially what i want to do now is sync this with my bucket because if i go to my platform here and i have a look we go to courses for example it should be here in the basics right we should have hello and it's not so what we can do is we'll run this little uh command line tool called 
all our clone, which allows you to essentially sync up uh, your local files with uh, the R2 bucket. So I can run R clone sync, and I basically pass in uh, my folder here. So let's hit run. And if we have a look now, so I, so again, I just specify here, um, this is my local drive, and then this here is my bucket, and it just syncs the changes between the two. So let's head over here, and if we do a refresh, this should work now. Basics, and there we go, look at that, we have hello, so it worked. So now that you have the videos in R2, you're ready to go. Now, I personally made another script here that essentially syncs uh, all the videos and chapters with my database. I can run something like npm wrong sync videos. And if I run this, it's gonna look through everything that's new and added and do all the changes to it. And now if I refresh here, we should also get that hello video. So I'll just refresh this, let's have a look. And there we go, we have hello, that's gonna hold all the resolutions there. It's gonna mark the duration as well, which we can pull from the segments. So you can count over each segment since you know their length is four or whatever you said, you can count them and then you get the duration of the video. Really cool, right? And then also a prefix here uh, that points to the master playlist. All right, so this points to the master playlist and then from there on, you just need the player to actually stream it. So let me show you how we can do that. So to make this work, the first thing we're gonna need is some Demux player. Make sure you install this. Um, this is essentially allows you to stream HLS video, but also has the styling added to it. You might find another package called Mux Video. That's pretty much the same as this, but it doesn't have the, the, all the nice like stylings attached to it. And here I can also specify that you should import the lazy version of this, not the other one, uh, because with this one, uh, you're actually avoiding this like big like layout shifts, uh, which is really nice. So when you're actually, let me show you here, when I refresh the page, as you can see, we have that big black don't say that. <laughs> this big black uh, square here, a rectangle you might even say, right? Um, that kind of holds that space here for you. Uh, if the lazy is not loaded, it just pops in and kind of shifts all the layout. And then here, as you can see, you can specify the URL. I have here the temporary one that they provide you. You shouldn't use this, by the way. Uh, you should attach a custom domain to this. Uh, this one is going to be rate limited by them, and it also won't be able to get cached in any way. Uh, but I put it here so you can see it. And this basically is like your, your basic like path. And then this video prefix essentially points all the way to that folder where that master playlist lies. All right, that's kind of all you need. And then you specify the stream type, which is gonna be on demand. Here you can also specify live if you need for certain cases. And here's the nice thing, since we extracted that first frame, we can even place a placeholder now and just point it to that poster. So here it is without it, right? If I refresh, we just get that black screen. And if I put the placeholder that we extracted with that JPEG, you can even do like a low quality blur image if you want. You can generate that uh, in your script if you want. But look, if I refresh now, you can actually get the preview of the first image. So it's not weird looking or anything like that. But from there on, there you go. Look at that. It streams really nice. You can do the nice buttons here and you can switch between the qualities as well. And it's just going to look for uh, you know, those specific TS chunks in the quality that you selected. And this is really great. It's um, super cheap, right? You can hold probably a couple of hundreds of gigabytes here for a dollar or two and not worry about even, you know, spending on, um, you know, streaming it. And that's kind of the gist of it. You can go here and, you know, like explore stuff with like pre-signed URLs and stuff like that if you want to make this a bit more protected. I tried with pre-signed URLs. One thing you should keep in mind is that you cannot just pre-sign the master playlist. You have to pre-sign all of the individual segments, like TS chunks. And I'm not even sure if that's worth it, to be honest. But let me know what you think of this. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Drop a little like and a little subscribe. We'll be back either uh, tomorrow or the next day, we'll continue our like NeoVim and the monkey typing stream as well. So subscribe and be there for that. All right. See you next time. Peace.